Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another one of Purdue's 150th festival events. My name is Arnold Chen, and I'm the managing director for the Center for Entrepreneurship here on campus. It's my great honor to be able to spend the next hour chatting with KK Wong. KK is a proud Purdue alumnus who got his bachelor's in computer science in 1996. And upon graduation, he first went to work for Microsoft. After working for Microsoft for 13 years, he and his co-founder started Xiaomi, one of the fastest growing cell phone companies in the world. Today, Xiaomi is the fourth largest cell phone manufacturer, right behind Apple. They've experienced the explosive growth that all future entrepreneurs dream of. Please help me welcome KK Wong to the stage. Thank you. Thank you. So for today's format, we have about an hour, and we won't have time for Q&A, but KK has agreed to make himself available for meeting with students for a few minutes afterwards. Hi, also, guys. Also to start, Good everyone afternoon. who's got a cell phone, please put it in airplane mode. Thank you. Well, it's surreal to be here, you know, uh, sitting here with you guys. Uh, it's been, uh, you know, too many years. You know, so it's been 22 years. 20, since been more than 22 campus. years. Um, you know, uh, he, he already told you how, how old I am. Okay. <laughs> but, um, you know, the last two days, you know, thanks to the, um, you know, uh, Chiu and um, Cheryl and team, uh, it was exciting to visit, you know, um, some place that is so familiar, you know. Um, you know and, um, you know, I would say, you know, those were the three, you know, most, you know, memorable and, uh, you know, um, uh, happy years you know, in my, uh, you know, young life at that time. Uh, it also changed my uh, um, uh, way of thinking a lot. Um, and this afternoon was uh, especially uh, uh, meaningful to me. I got to um, uh, actually revisit four of the, actually five of the, you know, uh, uh, professors I had in the past. Well, they all look the same, you know, from, uh, <laughs> yeah. And that's not the scary part. The scary part is they're still working so diligently in their office, you know, when I visit them. Uh -huh. I didn't expect to see the old professors, right? So what do you think of campus now that you're the back? The campus is, uh, you know, it's the same. You know, I, I, I can still find my way. You know, I, I, um, some, I was... Some uh, things look exactly the same. Yeah, you know, the, um, I arrived in um, uh, uh, Chicago uh, two days ago and uh, drove down, right? After, you know, dinner with, um, you know, uh, um, uh, our friends here, you know, um, I actually uh, walk around campus a little bit. The first place I went is uh, Hicks, okay? <laughs> the library. It's like, you know, I, I'm, I was programmed to, to do that every night, right? Uh, <laughs> for three years. And uh, the first thing I do is uh, I just walk there, okay? And then I went downstairs. Um, there used to be a study lounge, um, you know, uh, to the right, uh, across from the library. Um, it, was, it used to be open 24 hours, okay? The library, the library would close at uh, 11.30 or something, but the study launch would remain open throughout the night, okay? And um, that's actually where I spent you know, most of the night, you know, uh, during those three years. Um, sur surreal, surreal. It only looked a little bit different, you know? Uh, yeah. I, I don't see people delivering Papa John, you know, um, uh, after 11 anymore. Uh, yeah. in, that, in, that, in, in the that, lounge. In the lounge. Um, Anyway, um, it's good to be back. Uh, so today, you know, uh, uh, I, I'm very excited, you know, uh, thanks to, uh, you know, Arlo and team, you know, uh, let's, uh, you know, uh, have some, you know, uh, conversation to help me. It, you know, in the last two days, you know, um, being in the environment, it has helped me to recollect my memory slowly. Just seeing the old building. I, I almost felt like, you know, ways. someone that had, you know, a memory loss, you know, uh, when I came back, but uh, now I'm actually gradually building my mem memory. Lots of little funny stories, you know. Some of them I would share with you, some of them I would never yeah. share with anyone. <laughs> yeah, came back, came back into mind. Yeah. So speaking of Purdue, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you heard about Purdue, how you decided to come to Purdue, and how you made a giant leap from Hong Kong sure. to West Lafayette. Sure. Uh, it was actually a simple, uh, you know, uh, logical decision on my part. Uh, my dad uh, was an engineer. Okay, he uh, introduced introduced me to uh, you know computer you know early on because I, I saw him you know uh, we didn't have uh, you know enough money to buy you know um, the full blown you know latest uh, state of the art computer so I would see him actually coming home every day uh, bringing you know different parts 
And you know, it took him you know a couple months to actually assemble a computer that would work. Okay, uh, when I was uh, you know uh, much younger, and so I uh, I you know uh, I was attached to uh, you know the concept of computer. So I wanted to go to where you know the computer you know um, uh, uh, you know uh, major is actually good. You know uh, when I look for school, and uh, you know Purdue you know uh, uh, was actually very high you know up in the ranking you know for um, um, uh, computer, you know, related, you know, subject like double E and uh, aerospace engineering, of course, right? Mm -hmm. So um, that's why I come to Purdue, you know, I'm wanting to, um, to, to study uh, uh, computer. What I uh, didn't plan for is um, I was planning to go to double E to learn the hardware side of, of uh, computer, okay? Of course, you know, later on in my life in, in, in Xiaomi, we, we, we start doing lots of hardware. But at the time, you know, I discovered the, uh, the School of Computer Science. Okay, and um, I don't know if um, uh, Dr. Dunsmo is here today. <laughs> yeah, so this afternoon I, I, I just share with him that, you know, he literally changed my, uh, my career, you know, uh, uh, by, you know, uh, giving, giving us such a great program, you know, CS180, for those of you that, <laughs> anyone? There you go. CS180, yeah. So, um, so for you, that was the pivotal class. After that class, you know, I realized that, hey, you know, uh, software actually is uh, the career I wanted to you know, go into, right? So I, you know, stick with uh, computer science, you know, for the next three years. Um, and after that, you know, uh, you know I uh, just uh, go directly to Microsoft, you know, because Microsoft was doing a lot of software. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but may I share more? With, uh, Absolutely. My, I was, was going to ask. With, uh, Dan Small. I, I went to his office this afternoon, and I, I said, um, Professor, do you remember me? And he said, yes, KK, I remember you vividly. Uh, I couldn't believe it, OK? Because <laughs> he has so many students. He has, um, you know, like 30 years of teaching CS 180, right? How can he remember me? And then, um, you know, uh, the, the memory, you know, the, the, the memory recovery that I told you about came, came back, OK? And then I remember, you know, maybe uh, uh, the reason why I left an uh, impression on him was because, you know, um, in the very beginning of the class, I was not doing well. I actually flung my first quiz or exam, you know, in his class. And um, that's, you know, uh, when he was actually, you know, uh, going through the, uh, you know, I was actually missing, you know, on some sort of simple answer, you know, at least, you know, in his opinion, must be. And then he was, you know, speaking to the class the next day and say that, well, you know, uh, 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 computer science might not be for all of you, you know, um, for some of you that have, that have a hard time, you know, um, picking up on, you know, the, the basic concept, you might want to reconsider, okay? So, but uh, he never gave me the, you know, demeaning look, you know, you know how, you know, uh, Dr. Densmore is, you know, he's like the most patient man, you know, in the world. He really, you know, just say that to make sure that we don't, you know, go to the wrong field, okay? Yeah. But, uh, throughout the sem uh, you know, uh, semester, okay, I was able to you know, um, you know, uh, um, go from you know, flunking to in the end, you know, I, I, you know, um, I, I like to think that you know, I was actually you know, uh, ended up you know, the top you know, student in his class you know, during the final grade. Yeah. And um, well, you know, uh, he switched his um, look of um, you know, avoiding eye contact with me you know, from uh, slowly giving me the... Uh, the expression of encouragement. Every time I actually get better and better, uh, I told him, you know, you helped me to fix my, uh, you know, not just teaching me programming, okay? We did uh, C++ at the time, okay? Uh, what he truly gave me was, um, you know, the, the experience of overcoming my, uh, you know, confidence problem, okay? I told him, wow, you know, that was, you know, a really meaningful semester because I came in, you know, actually not knowing enough about programming than many other students, um, but in, in, uh, in the proper, you know, uh, uh, learning environment, I was able to, you know, uh, meet the expectation and excel. I told him that uh, the same thing happened to me, you know, again and again, you know, uh, down the road. When I graduated from Purdue, okay, I, uh, you know, I, I, I thought I was, uh, you, know, uh, you know, pretty good because I actually, uh, you know, uh, get all A's on uh, CS and, uh, you know, A's on my, on my class. And then when I go to Microsoft, guess what, the same thing happened again, right? Uh, I, all of a sudden seeing all these talented people from everywhere. And the same, the same process, you know, uh, basically occurred where I have to, you know, 
in the beginning, you know, uh, feeling that feeling a little bit inferior, but you know, with um, you know uh, more diligent working and um, the right way of approaching problem, able to catch up, you know, to um, to um, you know how other people are doing, and in the end, you know, excel. So uh, that pattern, you know, um, happened again and again, you know, uh, throughout the years. And uh, to this afternoon, I personally thank him for that. Yeah. That's why, uh, you know, um, um, he was the first professor I, I need to, uh, you know, seek out and uh, pay my respect. That's an amazing story. So what kind <clears throat> of student were you? What, what was KK like as an 18 or 20-year-old here at West Lafayette? Right. So, um, well, I told you already that, um, you know, I literally came out in, um, you know, study launch, okay? Um, I don't know why I do that because, uh, you know, uh, we, we, we actually had a habit of uh, not sleeping through the night, okay? That's actually what many of the computer science, you know, um, uh, student actually um, uh, like. You know, we tend to be more so productive classes were tough in, the, in the evening, okay? We tend to think clear, you know, when yeah. we don't see the sun. <laughs> and, um, but of course, it has, you know, uh, so we basically just, you know, uh, um, you know, pull all nighters, you know, uh, me and my, my classmate yeah. in a study launch, okay? We know how to order the, the uh, you know, uh, pizza with the most discount. I don't know if you still do that. I think they do. You do? Okay. So. so you still, you know, uh, like, you know, pick the first table, you know, closest to the, to the door. And uh, uh, during midnight, you know, you would be actually, you know, placing, people would be placing order for Papa John, right? But when the delivery guy come, you know, they would ask, uh, Peter, and Peter probably has, has gone already. Didn't wait for the pizza. And then he would say, okay, have price, you know, pepperoni. <laughs> and then we would be the first one to, uh, to pick it up. Yeah, that's how we get, um, you know, um, Very affordable cool. pizza. Yeah. yeah. But um, uh, so uh, what kind of student was I, okay? I like to see myself as a diligent student, okay? I, um, at the high point, I uh, concurrently work for three professors, okay, as an under, undergraduate, okay? And... Um, uh, that's also why, you know, I had to, uh, you know, um, you know, pull all night you know, in, uh, in the study lunch. Um, that's a drawback, though, you know. Uh, it may be very hard to get up in the morning to attend the classes, you know. Uh, I can imagine morning classes <laughs> were tough for you and your friends. <laughs> but uh, it turned out to be okay because um, I was working for the professors. They were, they were teaching me. So uh, uh, they know that I was actually working, you know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, I was up to speed on the material. Didn't give me a hard time. Uh, 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 you know, uh, not uh, going to, you know, their classes all the time. Um, it, it was unusual, you know, in a sense that, you know, an uh, undergraduate student um, got to actually work for these, you know, great professors, right, because they usually take grad students, okay. I still remember the tactics I, I took to get the job, okay. I would go to a professor and uh, said, um, uh, professor, you know, do you need someone to um, uh, help call out your algorithm? And they said, uh, sorry, I only take a uh, grad student. And I would say, can I work for you for free? Okay. <laughs> and uh, if I fail, you know, in two weeks, fire me. Otherwise, you know, let me do that for you. Okay. Well, I don't think they actually, you know, uh, took me on for the fact that they didn't have to pay me because they, all of them ended up paying me after one month. Okay. I think they actually, you know, took me in because they were, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, feeling my, my uh, you know, uh, passion, you know, to learn from them, right? Uh, my initiative actually, you know, um, uh, moved them, you know, to some degree. But that's how I, uh, you know, get my, uh, you know, first jobs. Um, yeah. So th th those three years were, uh, you know, super fun years for me. Um, when oh, I, I was chatting with, uh, you know, Arlo, he asked me, you know, uh, uh, is there, if there's one thing that I would do differently, you know, yeah. back then, what would I do? I said, you know, I would, I would have, you know, uh, party more, okay? <laughs> yeah, because after I started working, you know, you know, time just fly, you know? Before you know it, you're actually back to your school, you know, after 22 years, telling, you know, the students how diligent you were. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's a very sad, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> young, young life. Yeah. So KK was kind enough to put together a few photos. So if you can take a look at here, KK, you just want to talk us through these two. Can you tell which one? I was. Yeah. Have I changed that much? <laughs> the yellow, the yellow. Yeah, yeah. 
And then what about the, what, what kind of clubs you were involved with while yeah. on campus? So the guy, you know, uh, next to me, uh, the shoulder guy, you know, was my roommate. And, um, you know, uh, oh, we had a lot of fun together. And, uh, you know, he, he's the kind of guy that always go to party, you know. Uh, Not you, though. And uh, he was the president of uh, the Hong Kong Student Association, you know, for yeah. two years, you know, during our stay here. Uh, we still, you know, uh, you know, stay in touch closely. He's in Hong Kong. Um, yeah, two of the other, you know, students that uh, were not graduated yet, um, uh, they, they're working in California. So um, after this trip, you know, I'm going to, uh, you know, uh, stop by California. Yeah. And uh, I've taken a lot of the pictures of the new campus, okay? Yeah. I'm going to share with them. Do you remember where the picture was taken? Uh, that's in the Double E building. Um, uh, hall uh, next to the fountain. Is that right? The double E is along the engineering mall. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Is that right? I don't can, know. Can you? Okay. I can't tell. <laughs> I can't tell. Yeah. Just curious. Anybody? Yeah. yeah. They haven't, the, the building's probably changed since. Yeah, yeah. But you can still see the, you know, the, the color tone remains the same, you know, for all buildings in Purdue. Yeah. Yeah. That theme. Yeah. And the, you know, the, the right hand side is, uh, you know, some old, uh, you know, uh, newsletter. Uh, you can see that, you know, we were still, you know, uh, doing those, you know, um, you know, handwritten form and then make copies, you know, with the photocopier. Yeah, very old school, very old school. <laughs> Brings back a lot of memories, right? <clears throat> so then after you left Purdue, yes. you uh, went to work for Microsoft. Why don't you tell us about your experience there? Yeah, so uh, um, I actually did an a internship with uh, Microsoft, you know, um, before my uh, last semester. Uh, uh, it was really impressive, truly impressive, you know, uh, for, for a computer science student to go to, uh, at the time, you know, the biggest uh, software company in the world. Uh, I learned a whole lot, you know, from Microsoft. Um, the first, you know, five or six years, you know, um, I, I had the most fun, you know, uh, being a, you know, young programmer, okay? Um, I mean, you know, if, even if you don't pay me, you know, I would be home, you know, programming, you know, uh, every night anyway, right? So I was shocked that you know any anyone would actually pay me to do the things that I would do for yeah. free anyway, right? So um, I still remember in the first five years, six years, I'm sure Arnold, you know, probably did the same thing. You know, my my um, uh, my wife, you know, who was you know still my uh, girlfriend at the time, you know, would tell you that you know I never go home before two a.m. at Microsoft in the morning every day, right? I would be you know um, in the office, you know, uh, programming alongside with not just me, my manager, and my manager's manager, okay? It, it was a very, you know, hardcore, you know, age for, for Microsoft. It was still very, it was already very big, but the environment was uh, very startup-like, mm -hmm. okay? Because this was and the late 90s, so. This is, uh, we're talking about 97, 98, 99, yeah. right? Um, yeah, before 2000, right? So um, I, I started working in the MSN group, Okay, um, I, and then I, um, you know, move on to work on the, you know, um, uh, BizTalk project. Okay, that was okay for those of you that doesn't know, you know, uh, this this team, um, the um, the young uh, product unit manager at the time overseeing this project was Satya. Okay, the the current CEO of Microsoft. Okay, so um, it was a startup, you know, project within Microsoft. Uh -huh. Okay, we had to do, you know, uh, e-commerce platform. You know, um, that's when I actually work on data warehouse, okay, project. Um, my first test was uh, to analyze the log, the web traffic log for MSN. It was the, you know, number three, you know, biggest uh, site at the time. And, um, yeah, I just, you know, re re refreshed this part of the memory with uh, a professor this afternoon. Uh -huh. um, the project was so fun, you know. Um, uh, it, when, when, when I first joined the group, it took them more than 24 hours of processing to handle, you know, their daily log, which means they cannot catch up with their daily log, right. okay? 24 hours to catch, you know, yeah. uh, 24 hours worth of uh, uh, log. So uh, my, my task was to optimize the performance, to make it run faster, okay? So you go from 24, uh, more than 24 hours to 15 hours, to 10 hours, to eight hours, to five hours, uh, in, the, in the end, I remember we actually get it down to 1.5 hours, okay? From 24. Uh, from 24 hours. So, um, you know, uh, 
I would say that was really, you know, that really, that little story actually captured the fun of being a programmer, okay? Nothing actually was more thrilling than seeing how you, you know, trim off, you know, seconds, seconds, you know, uh, with better algorithm, better programming, you know, better, you know, way of, smarter way of, uh, you know, uh, uh, dealing with your code um, to get to that point. So, uh, it, well, you know, for those of you who are not in uh, computer science, you, you might be thinking, oh, my God, so boring. <laughs> but um, if you are in computer science, you know what I mean. Um, so work on that project for a little bit and, um, and then uh, uh, work, work in Windows team, you know, uh, work on the messaging platform. Uh, um, you know, uh, and many of the things I learned from um, the book of um, uh, Douglas Comer, you know, help, you know, the internet working with uh, TCP IP. You probably have those. Yeah. yeah. And um, so work on messaging. Uh, and then, you know, I uh, actually took a, you know, um, a pretty big change, you know, by uh, doing an internal transfer to um, uh, Microsoft China in Beijing. Uh, as I do that change, I also took on a completely different field. You know, I, work, I was working on, um, I was tasked to, you know, build up the, um, the, the Windows Mobile team in China, you know, for the Windows Mobile team in, uh, in Redmond. So in the end, I actually get, get uh, you know, get, um, you know, close to one, 150 very talented, um, you know, uh, people working on, um, you know, various, various features for Windows Mobile. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, during that four years, uh, that's also when I, you know, uh, once I get into that, that area, I realize, you know, how, you know, uh, uh, how fast the China market is moving and how big the China market, you know, was. And uh, how fast the you know mobile internet, you know wave is actually you know coming along, right? Um, and of course you know that's also why you know um, I decided to uh, you know move on to the next phase of my life to uh, uh, co-found you know um, a new a new startup at the time you know Xiaomi um, by leaving Microsoft. Um, it was a natural move because uh, uh, I felt um, I cannot miss this, that wave. Okay, I've already missed the uh, the internet wave. Okay, yeah. uh, going back in. Uh, perspective. We, we, I graduated in 96, okay? So uh, if I was super smart, okay, I would have gone into the internet field right away, okay? I should be the one that have, you know, co-founded, you, know, uh, you know, Facebook or, you know, Netscape. Google or Netscape, Netscape you know, but I completely missed, you know, the, the, the internet wave, you know? I, we, you know, we had access to the internet, of course, but we were just using internet to do fun things, you know, to 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 uh, to you know, to to do free downloads, yeah. <laughs> download the wrong content, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, didn't come to you know the uh, idea of hey, why can't we do e-commerce? You know, if we did e-commerce, we would you know have a chance to you be know, Amazon to be Amazon, right? So we completely missed the uh, the internet wave, okay, um, you know, for no good reason, okay. Um, but you know, uh, when the mobile, mobile internet you know wave came, and I was in a position to see this is coming, I I, I just had a good feeling that we cannot miss this again. Okay. So was it a difficult decision leaving a big kind of safe company, especially later in your career, to start something completely new, particularly in China? Yeah. So uh, it's really interesting. You know, um, people you know around me all think that it was such a big decision that I had to make, right? Uh, leaving the, um, the, the you know, comfort zone, you know, leaving, you know, behind the, uh, the, the good pay, okay? Microsoft was, um, you know, uh, uh, paying me, you know, uh, very generously already, you know, um, um, as I, uh, you know, move up the rank. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, I had this, you know, uh, concept of uh, safety net, okay? You know, uh, I spent 15 years with Microsoft already, and I have done, you know, pretty well inside, you know. My review in Microsoft was, um, you know, uh, as good as my GPA in Purdue, okay? <laughs> so, um, I, I would like to call that my safety net, right? Um, if I don't use my safety net, I'm actually wasting my safety net, right? I knew that, you know, if I were to take a venture out, you know, if I fail miserably, I can still always come back and, uh, you know, uh, Microsoft would, yeah. would take me gladly, you know? I still could code, you know, uh, like when I was young. Uh, but when I was, you know, observing this huge opportunity that I just mentioned, the, the China market, you know, the booming China market, the booming mobile internet market, this perfect storm, you know, was hitting, you know, uh, in a very obvious way, you know, in, in my mind. 
it was really obvious, you know, to uh, take the leap of faith to, to capture this opportunity. So to me, it was actually not a very uh, not difficult. I mean, difficult you saw decision the opportunity as... at all, right? The last. So I've been thinking about, you know, um, you know, capturing that that wave, you know, um, uh, for a while, right? Um, and the last wall to 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 break down the camel was, um, you know, uh, meeting, you know, um, uh, our CEO, late, late CEO in um, in uh, Xiaomi, Lei Jun. You know, uh, I don't know how many of you uh, know about Lei Jun. Uh, he was, uh, you know, uh, uh, he was already a well-known serial entrepreneur, you know, before Xiaomi. Okay, uh, so he did multiple startup, and all of them actually, you know, did did um, fairly successful. Okay, not the scope of uh, Xiaomi. Okay, but fairly fairly successful. Um, I met met him, you know, um, via you know uh, the second partner of um, you know Xiaomi, uh, my ex coworker in Microsoft. Uh, I met him in a, uh, in a coffee shop, you know, and uh, we basically sat there for uh, you know five and a half hours. We chatted for five and a half hours. What did we talk about? Okay, we basically talk about products for five and a half hours. Okay, he would be you know uh, carrying with him you know a bag okay which contains like six or seven you know smartphones at the time you know from different makers from Apple from uh, you know um, Motorola. Motorola Samsung. You know, from uh, Sony, no, he didn't have then. Huawei. Huawei at that time, you know, didn't was exist. actually shipping very, very shitty. You know, handset. <laughs> you know, yeah, they didn't, didn't improve until we came. But uh, <laughs> so you know, uh, and uh, Android's uh, G1. You know, the the first uh, Android phone um, made by uh, Google. So he would tell me that you know he has taken apart all these phones. You know, the hardware. Right? He would be telling me, hey, you know, um, what what is the you know. Um, uh, you know things that he would have done differently for different products, right? For hardware, for software, for the design, and all that. We just talk about products for five and a half hours. And you know, to me, it was actually very unusual. You know, I, you know, um, when I was in Microsoft, you know, uh, during my um, last couple of years, I, I had you know reviews. I had meetings with uh, the senior VP, you know, uh, of Microsoft, you know, uh, on regular basis. Okay. None of them would actually talk to me about you know products like that. None of them would actually have you know show me their passions you know for products like that. Okay, um, and I, I felt it was actually the core of building a startup. Okay, uh, the core of a startup is really to create good product. Okay, um, and so that was the last straw you know on the Camelback. You know, I realized that the two of them were about to you know form a company, and you know toward the end of the coffee, okay, which. It's probably the most important coffee I've ever had in my life. <laughs> right? I just said to them, you know, okay, um, whatever you guys are up to, come in. Okay. So I was the first uh, co-founders to to uh, co-founder to join um, uh, this startup, um, and yeah. So it it was a natural, you know, um, you know, um, logical, you know, so steps of. Uh, Xiaomi has that se decision. seven co-founders. We have uh, we eventually, you know, um, you know, uh, banded, you know, seven uh, old men together. You know, myself included. So, how did that? Tell us about that process. How did you recruit or find that that co-founding team? Yeah. So, um, with this, this, you know, the same process of how you know Lei Jun actually recruited me actually worked really well for the other co-founder. Uh, but um, we we realized, you know, how uh, complicated this startup is. But by the way, you know, can I assume that you all at least know Xiaomi, you know, to some degree? Okay. Yeah, I think so, so. In, in, in one sentence, uh, you know, Xiaomi is a company that actually, you know, um, um, you know, does hardware products, um, you know, do software and uh, internet services. You know, uh, the goal for the company was to bring the, you know, uh, cutting edge technology, the premium of the premium, you know, uh, products to mass market at very affordable pricing. Okay. That's basically what the team was trying to do. So kind of take the iPhone that was way too expensive for everybody right. and make yeah. it available for the masses. Exactly. Just to give you an idea, you know, at the time, you know, uh, when, when, if you want to get, buy a you know, uh, uh, flagship phone from uh, uh, Motorola or you know, Samsung or Apple, it would cost about you know, 6,000 RMB. Okay? Not very affordable to most of the you know, uh, uh, you know, people. Okay? Uh, but uh, when we launched our first phone, we actually used all the top component from all the you know maker that were providing component to these you know um, you know giant you know um, uh, manufacturer I just mentioned, okay, 
if uh, Motorola is using you know the latest uh, you know CPU from um, you know Qualcomm, yeah. we we use the same you know CPU. We use the same you know uh, you know top end component for everything, right? And when we launched the first phone, when they were selling their phone for six thousand, we sell our phone at uh, below two thousand RMB. So that is what actually you know brought us to the map. Okay, that is what caused you know even the journalists actually wow you know in in our you know our press release they literally you know jump out of the chair you know and couldn't believe that we're actually selling for that price. In the beginning, you know nobody you know people actually were skeptical you know that um, you know um, uh, we were actually you know cutting you know costs you know by using you know inferior com component and all that. So I still remember you know when we first launched the first phone when we launched the first phone okay um, people would actually take apart the, uh, the phone to make sure we, we indeed use the component that we claim we are using, okay? They do it for many, many, uh, you know, products, you know, for, for, for Xiaomi, um, to the point, you know, that eventually we decided to actually, you know, uh, put so much focus in designing the interior of the hardware, knowing that they would take it apart. <laughs> we want them to feel <clears throat> impressed by opening up the hardware. Wow, the inside looks better than the outside, okay? <laughs> yeah, but after a while, you know, they believe that, you know, we, we mean what we said, okay? Mm -hmm. So, um, I won't go into too much detail of, you know, how do we achieve, you know, that, okay? It's, it could take easily, you know, two hours, yeah. three hours. Uh, but knowing that that was what we set out to do in the beginning, um, we realized, you know, how complicated, you know, this, building this startup was, okay? That's why we had to find, you know, seven co-founders. If we could, we would you know, be you know, finding 70 co-founders, you know, knowing how complicated this was, but we right. couldn't find that many people. Okay? Uh, so one, one of us you know, um, came from a hardware background. Uh, me and another co-founder came from software. Okay? Uh, two co-founders came from a design, one from a industrial design, another from a, you know, a software design, you know, the, the look and feel. One came from a, you know, program management, okay? uh, PM, uh, and Adrian was the ring leader, you know, he, he, he knows everything, right, based on his uh, previous you know, startup experience, previous, you know, uh, experience, you know, doing management, doing, you know, product development, everything. So um, that's what, what uh, the seven So you almost looked at, okay, if we're building a, a hardware phone, these are, the, <clears throat> these are the people we need, yeah. and just recruited them as your co-founding team. That's, that's what we, we, we uh, you know, plan in the beginning, that's way. Right. So if you would have told, if anyone would have asked, even back in 2010, and you told someone, I want to create a cell phone. I want to create a startup that's going to make cell phones. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy when you think about the cost for hardware, as well as you're going to go against these big people. I mean, you're going to get crushed. That was the best way to push you know, the VC away, if you tell them the truth. <laughs> <laughs> if you tell the VC that you were building a phone, you know, you know, they will think you're crazy because you know, all your competitors, you know, we're talking about all of them are Fortune 500 level, you yeah. know, um, giants, right? Um, but um, you know, fortunate for us, um, we actually, um, you know, uh, well, Lei Jun was actually very well connected uh, in the VC world. Okay, he was, um, you know, um, a very, uh, you know, renowned angel investor in the industry. Okay, uh, so people actually, you know, pay a lot of credit, um, give a lot of credit to our background. Okay, they actually, you know, take a leap of faith. You know, uh, so as, they don't as, even want to hear about our, you know, business plan. You know, because if we tell them, you know, they might, they might have a hard time convincing themselves this, this is the right thing. They would just say, okay, whatever you guys do, we we'll just, you know, blindly, you know, throw in the money for the angel round and go with you. And of course, now they're they're actually, you know, are very happy they have made that decision. Yeah. Uh, but at the time, you know, um, I would think, I I would say, um, the thing we set out to do was so. Uh, 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 impossible that, you know, uh, gave us actually the best, best chance of success. Let, let, me, let me explain what I just said, okay? If you actually go out and do things that, you know, everybody agree that, of course, they will, they will be successful. Well, if the logic is so, you know, um, uh, tight and, you know, uh, the reasoning is so convincing, you know, that something is going to be successful, I can bet you, you know, uh, 10 other people have already done that before, okay? You have to um, assume that, you know, this world is filled with smart people, you know, smarter than... So if it sort of sounds you, easy, everybody's going to do it. If that's, you know, easy and, uh, you know, uh, so um, this sounds so logical, so, uh, so, you know, possible, people have done that already, okay? 
you know, the kind of startup that would be successful is the kind that actually would seem impossible at the beginning. So, so a little bit crazy. To, to scare away, you know, the, the uh, skeptics, right? Um, to push away, you know, um, you know the, the, the big guys too, okay? Because the big guys, right? Um, I imagine if we were to pitch, if I were to pitch this idea inside Microsoft at the time, you know, it would be shut down because, you know, uh, it, it was crazy. But, you know, um, these are the kind of, um, you know, uh, ideas that actually turn out to be actually the most likely to be successful, assume, assuming we can actually execute it, right, uh, according to the plan, right? Assuming we were lucky enough, you know, it takes a lot of luck, you know, to build a startup, okay? But um, um, I, I think um, the, sometimes, you know, uh, having the con con conviction, you know, to believe that uh, what you're building, you know, mm -hmm. Okay, if you fail, you know, you, you fail. But if you were to succeed, it's going to, you know, make a positive impact, you know, big enough to make you, you know, not only proud, but willing to um, work on that problem, you know, you know uh, 24 hours a day, you know, seven days a week, okay? That's literally what we have done, you know, in the you know, um, last eight or nine years, right? Especially in the early days, right? Um, you really what have to it? believe in enough to... To, to, yeah. to go through those suffering. You know, comparing to my, my days in Microsoft, you know, I just told you I never go home at, you know, before two. The startup is like, you know, 10 times, you know, tougher. Right? So, so what, was it, what was some of the days like? What was a typical day like in the early days of Xiaomi? Um, you lose all your friends, basically. They, <laughs> yeah. And um, on, only time you, you get to spend is probably with your family in the weekend, okay? Uh -huh. But every day, you know, um, it's... Basically, you woke up and then you would be, you know, um, uh, working. Um, fortunately, we didn't, you know, we have enough funding that we didn't have to work in a garage. Okay. Okay. Uh, but um, you know, we basically have to, you know, work. And uh, uh, in the beginning, it was tough because, um, you know, uh, although we we could actually find some, uh, you know, um, um, uh, Gussie, you know, VC to support us, um, it was hard to actually recruit, right? <laughs> You know, uh, because when you actually try to recruit, you know, employees, mm -hmm. they would think you're crazy too, right? Uh, <laughs> you know, so um, each recruit, you know, took so much time, okay? We would be, you know, uh, talking to the, the candidate we really wanted to get, you know, you know, one whole evening, okay? Another evening, another evening to the point that they're so tired that they feel guilty of refusing no. to come. <laughs> then they reluctantly, you know, agree, okay? And... You move on to the next candidate, okay? But sometimes that's good because that's a high barrier to really find the people who believe in your vision. Exactly. And, hey, I want to try to do the impossible as well. Yeah. You really have to find, you know, people that's, you know, uh, semi-crazy at that time. Also, you know, to, yeah. uh, to, um, um, to want to, you know, take the uh, leap of faith, right? Just like, you know, uh, uh, read it. Um, uh -huh. So, um, but thinking back, you know, the, the time really, you know, um, uh, was awesome, you know, it was, you know, very productive, you know, um, um, I personally have, you know, learned a lot, you know, um, um, in, in this phase of, um, you know, my career, you know, uh, now I'm in my, you know, third phase of career. So before we get there, yeah, okay. I want to show, show a picture, so, yeah. do you remember these two? Yeah. So the one you were talking to me earlier on the left, yes. why don't you explain yeah. that one? So the left picture, you know, uh, was taken in the very first day, you know, um, you know, of our, you know, company. So Xiaomi day one. Xiaomi day one, okay. Uh, you see the rice cooker <laughs> in the middle, okay. For those of you that don't, don't understand Chinese, Xiaomi means little rice, literally in, um, in Chinese, okay. So as a symbol of uh, the name of the company, we actually uh, brought in, uh, you know, um, uh, a, a, a rice cooker of, um, you know, little rice. Each of us, you know, basically, you know, took one you know, um, set, set the, uh, uh, do, did the toasting, and then get right, uh, right to work. So, um, unfortunately, that was the only picture we have taken in that day. And, uh, you know, by some, uh, actually, this is one of the two. I, I actually gave you two, right? But uh, apparently, you know, we didn't think, you know, um, uh, this would become a historical moment at the time, okay? <laughs> um, so, you know, we, we, we really just, you know, did that in a casual way. None of us, you know, did our hair right, you know. <laughs> we didn't dress properly, uh, you know, taking the picture against the light, right. You didn't know you were changing the world on that day. Yeah, we, we knew, but we didn't think the picture mattered that much. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, but um, now every time, you know, um, when we celebrate our anniversary, you know, people would actually share, circulate this picture around, and, uh, you know, we, we all wish we have taken a proper picture. So now, you know, I, I do a lot of, uh, you know, investment, into investment. Uh, I, I sometimes attend their first day of work, okay, and I always, you know, uh, remind them, take good picture today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then tell us a little bit more about the name. How did the name... Oh, Xiaomi. Um, so, um, you know, um, we wanted, you know, to find, you know, something that's, um, you know, um, um, personable, okay? Um, and uh, we, we uh, took notes, you know, from uh, companies that were successful, usually have very sim simple, you know, but very, you know, uh, personable name, okay? You, you, you think Apple. Apple is like, you know, something that everyone eats, right, in the world, right? It's the healthy fruit, right? So we were thinking, hey, what, what do people in China, you know, <laughs> eat every day? Yeah. <laughs> Rice, right? And um, originally we thought of, um, you know, um, okay, last week, <laughs> okay? But then, you know, as a uh, uh, rule of thumb for uh, coming up with names for internet company, you don't want names that is, you know, uh, uh, seemingly powerful, large, or, you know, um, uh, strong, because that's actually very impersonable, you know, far away from the, from the users, okay? Uh, people like names that's actually very, uh, you know, down to earth, okay? Particularly because that's the market segment that you're going after. Then Xiaomi, okay? Nothing is actually smaller than a small rice, right? <laughs> you know, it, nothing is more humble than that, right? And, um, and, and that's thick, basically, you know. Uh, it, you know, we, we, we like the name, okay? And uh, um, after we started, you know, using that name, um, after we become, you know, um, uh, reasonably uh, successful, uh -huh. uh, we see a bunch of, um, you know, startup, you know, using, you know, different variation of uh, the word me, me. Okay, in their company name. Yeah. Second picture was the first offsite. Uh, uh, the, the guy in the middle is our CEO. Okay. I can't remember what we were looking at. You know, we, uh, yeah, it, it was the first, you know, offsite. You know, we, um, we had maybe 15, 16 people. That, that was the original, you know, um, you know core of the company, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, for the entrepreneurs on campus, a lot of times we talk about like the three main things you need are obviously you need a product value proposition. You kind of talked about what you're doing there. You need the team, and then you've talked about that. What about the fi finance and funding part? Can you yes. talk a little bit about how that went for Xiaomi and, yeah. and your okay. team? Okay, so, um, well, be before I answer the question, I have to, uh, you know, um, uh, Call that you know, Xiaomi was not a you know typical startup. Okay, um, uh, by the time we started Xiaomi, you know, uh, each of us was already you know uh, carry, carrying with us you know 15 to 20 years of you know work experience. Okay, so you can say that you know Xiaomi you know was founded by um, you know uh, uh, seven old men. Okay, the average age of the um, you know founding team you know was uh, 40 years old. You know. Um, I was not 40 at that time, but, um, you know. Uh, you were pulling down the average. I, I, I helped to, you know, keep the <laughs> no average, way. you know, down. Um, uh, so each of us were already, you know, um, um, uh, fairly senior in each of our field at the time, okay? Um, that's what made the funding, you know, interesting. Um, we could have, you know, funded the, the early run on our own, okay? Especially Lei Jun, okay? Um, but we insisted, you know, we should actually, you know, uh, take some. We, we did invest, you know, on our own a little bit. Um, but uh, we insist to take outside funding. Why? Because we wanted to give us the extra pressure by taking other people's money, okay? If you were to actually do a project out of your own pocket, okay, if you fail, you actually, you know, um, you can accept that because you're actually losing your own money. But if you have taken your best friend's money, of, or if you have taken money from your you know, uh, relative, okay, you couldn't sleep you know, if you're going to lose this money. You know, it's going to keep you, you know, give you that you know, extra you know, um, uh, pressure to, 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 to do well. Okay? So that's, that was the reasoning, seriously, yeah. you know, for us to take the you know, angel money. No, it makes you accountable to somebody else. Yes. Um, and um, the other reason is uh, you, you want to take the money so that, you know, the valuation is a fair valuation, okay? If we were to invest our own money, you know, the valuation is actually, you know, according to our, you know, you know could be four cents of, um, you know, uh, uh, reality about the, the company's valuation. Mm -hmm. But when you take 
you know, um, uh, money from outside. Believe me, you know, um, nobody is smarter than those VC. They would, they will not, you know, give you more than what you're worth. Okay, um, so. Uh, uh, from then on, you know, each round is actually based on, you know, uh, the company's performance and projection. You know, um, you know, we, uh, we rapidly, you know, uh, grow, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, our, you know, uh, revenue. Um, and as a result, you know, the, uh, the, the uh, market valuation. Um, so we're, we were really fast in reaching, you know, the billion dollar, you know. Which I think we have. I'll skip that one for now. Yeah. So. Oh, um, These are incredible know. numbers. So. You know, those three numbers, you know, um, I, I, I think we have broken, you know, the record, right? Um, two years after launch of our first phone, you know, we uh, reached, you know, one billion U.S. dollars in revenue, in sales, you know, the, uh, you know for that year. Um, four years after launch, we actually reached, you know, 10 billion U.S. dollars. Do you know how? how no, we, we have know, no idea. I, 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 you probably have no idea. Because <laughs> when I was in school, you know, I, I, I don't really know what, you know, That's one billion mean. means, okay? A million was... A lot already. But if you compared this, no, this one, sorry, this one. Yeah. This puts it in perspective. So this put that in perspective, right? It took Xiaomi seven years, you know, to um, you know get to uh, uh, ten uh, billion. Actually, sorry. A uh, hundred billion, uh, a hundred billion uh, in RMB. Oh, that would be roughly fifteen billion, you know, in US. Uh, so uh, it took Xiaomi seven years when you know some of the most successful company in this planet. You know, for Google, it took nine years, okay? Facebook, 12 years. Apple, 20 years. Alibaba, 17 years. It's the same for uh, Tencent. Huawei, 21 years. Uh, you know, that's what actually made it so, you know, um, uh, incredible. If you could go back to the previous uh, slide. Uh, uh, this one. Yeah, so um, uh, you talk about funding, right? So. Um, if you're doing well, actually, the funding actually you know, will come, you know, um, knocking on your door, okay? Uh, so we actually reached, you know, 45 billion uh, valuation, you know, um, you know, in uh, uh, 2014, okay? So it, it was unbelievable. No, no company have ever reached that, you know, uh, valuation, okay. which is actually roughly the same valuation as what we are in the market today, okay? Um, so, you know... Um, we actually, you know, uh, get to that point, you know, really fast. And of course, you know, we uh, later we will talk about, you know, ups and downs of, uh, you know, a company and yeah. how they have to, you know, uh, navigate through it, right? We have some, you know, tough years, you know, growing pain, you know, uh, after that. But uh, you know, the 45 billion valuation at the point, at that point, really, you know, made history. Yeah. Um, so I. I, I I guess I didn't answer your question in, uh, in terms of the funding because, uh, you know, for, the, for most of the startup, actually, even getting the angel round is difficult, could be difficult, okay? Um, but that's a very important process, you know, for a startup because um, you might have a brilliant idea, okay? But if you cannot convince, you know, people other than your parents that your idea is good, there's a very high chance that your idea is actually not that good. Right, mm -hmm. that's actually you know the important aspect of you know having the um, the the smartest people in the earth, you know the VCs, you know, yeah. you know these guys are sharks, okay, you know they uh, they they're actually smart. They won't you know throw away their money into a bad project, okay, um, you know they they actually are very good judge of you know whether your 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 idea is good, whether your direction is good, whether your strategy is good, okay. So um, um, I. I encourage you to, if you ever, you know, needed to, you know, get the funding, you know, to do your own entrepreneurship um, project, um, think of the, you know, funding part, you know, as a very positive, you know, process, you know, for validating your, your idea, you know, uh, because many people actually think of that as the painful part, okay? They, they get so frustrated when they cannot get the funding. But uh, think of the process as a very good, um, you know, uh, process to help you not waste your time in doing, you know, uh, 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 working on, uh, bad ideas. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you had alluded to this a little bit earlier, is that you hear a lot about these successful companies, the Apple, the Netflix of the world, and everything seems great. But when you are behind the scenes, you don't realize that there were, in the history of the company, there are multiple times where they were six weeks from running out of cash, two weeks, one bad decision from actually going out of business. Yes. I, I presumably Xiaomi had similar ups and downs. Can you share any of those? Yeah. Uh, 
So you know, uh, uh, Xiaomi is actually uh, in a in a in a uh, funny position where you know uh, ever since we launched our first phone, we have been on the on the map, you know, for the media, you know, for the for the press, and everyone actually many people knows about Xiaomi, you know, since its early days, right? So um, it's almost like you know um, building this startup, you know, under spotlight, you know, or in microscope, okay? Um, so um, we are already used to the you know voice that you know either think that you know Xiaomi can do anything, you know, they would actually ask us to ask us to build you know houses or to build cars, okay? Um, uh, to the other spectrum where, you know, people are very, you know, uh, pessimistic about the future of Xiaomi. They would think that you would be dead, you know, by the end of this year. You know, they think of, they said things like that every year, okay? You know, sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong, okay? Um, but what Arnold just pointed out is uh, actually very truthful. I cannot speak for all companies, okay? No, but, you know, for, I, I can imagine, I cannot imagine, you know, Xiaomi being alone, you know, in um, um, constantly, you know, have this sense of urgency. That you know, if we don't you know overcome this problem, if we don't you know uh, fix this challenge, we will be dead you know um, you know in three months you know or or less. Okay. So um, uh, especially you know when actually we're dealing with uh, you know um, uh, we're in the hardware business, right? Uh, we're in the business where we have to you know uh, make very accurate estimate uh, about how much inventory do we need to incur. Okay. What if just imagine you know. What if we actually ship a shitty product, okay? But we, before we, we uh, you know, um, you know, release it, you know, you basically have to. It's not like software, okay? Uh, for software, you know, um, you just put it out in the in, in in the in the web, and people just download it and install it, okay? For hardware, you have to pre-order all the parts three months before. Okay? You're basically paying for the phone. You're basically pre-paying for 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 the phone, okay? And if you actually, you know, um, you know, release a, you know, very bad product, nobody buys it. You end up with, you know, three months of, you know, uh, very expensive inventory. Okay, and um, and and one failure like that, you know, could easily kill a company. You know, um, um, you know, when when Xiaomi was, you know, uh, smaller in scope, one bad product like that could kill the company. Right now, you know, we're a little bit bigger. You know. Maybe two products will kill the company. <laughs> okay, for pro, uh, for for companies like Apple, maybe you know one bad product won't kill them. Okay, two products, you know, is enough to you know really really destroy the company. Okay, they're not as robust as you think they are. Okay, um, so those are the operational you know part of it. Uh, the other risk you know that we constantly remind us of not to uh, you know uh, you know um, you know fail to address is. Never forget, you know, what we set out to do. Okay, at the beginning, I already told you, you know, Xiaomi set out to, you know, we wanted to, you know, bring the, you know, the best product. You know, by best product, I, I mean, you know, product that, you know, is excellent in design, that's excellent in user experience, that is, you know, excellent in, uh, you know, uh, quality, but half the price, you know, one third the price, affordable, you know, to everyone, right? Uh, do not, you know, overgain, you know, from from your beloved. You know, uh, customers do not you know take the margin just because you can. Okay, that is the the, the fundamental principle of you know what we build self uh, you know Xiaomi on. Um, I so you know um, I have you know uh, a lot of faith you know in Xiaomi because if they can uphold if we can uphold this principle you know forever, I think we actually can be very sustainable, just like Walmart, just like Costco, you know. You know, those great companies, you know, you know, are the company that actually, you know, uh, do not overcharge, do not over, you know, uh, you know, uh, marginalize, you know, um, you know, take too much margin, you know, um, from their users. That's why they remain competitive, you know, against, you know, their competitors. Uh, the moment when Xiaomi stop doing that, that would be the end of Xiaomi. Okay, that could end, you know, very fast. Okay, um, so uh, you know, that's basically, you know, what. Uh, Keeps, you know, um, keeps us, you know, um, you know, awake, you know, at night, you know, uh, knowing that, you know, hey, we, you know, um, the, the 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 big company, you know, could die, you know, actually faster than the small companies. Okay, um, for those of you, you know, uh, that have used, um, you know, uh, older phones, how many of you actually, you know, remember, you know, Nokia, in its yeah. prime day? I okay. Had Nokia. I don't how many? Of, I had how many Motorola of you too. remember Motorola? <laughs> you know, Palm. Oh yeah, I had one of those too. <laughs> so, 
it didn't take long for them to collapse. You know, yeah. you know it for Motorola. It actually died literally. You know, in within you know one and a half years. Nokia they die just overnight. It's so scary. It's so scary. Okay, especially for our industry. But you guys are more than just a cell phone manufacturer. I think you you're always seeing more than I'm not just selling the cheapest phone. I'm not a commodity cell phone manufacturer. You always saw much more than that yeah. with the internet users and yeah. So. Um, because we had that, um, you know, original goal, you know, going into the market, um, cell phone was really just the first, you know, product, you know, we, we, we used to test out, you know, our model. And because this model actually worked really powerful, okay, uh, you know, uh, just to, to give you an idea, you know, how powerful this idea was. When we launched our phone, okay, it took us, you know, less than one and a half, uh, one and a half years to become number one in China, okay. That, that's how I mean, powerful that's this model was, okay? Uh, what, uh, now we are number three, you know, uh, we're actually two or three, you know, be, uh, around that, you know, second only to, uh, you know, Huawei, okay? But, um, you know, uh, the model actually works really well, even for the most competitive, you know, product, you know, uh, in the industry. Once, once we have proven this model works, we have taken this model to do other things like TV, we do router, we do, you know, smart speakers, we do, uh, you know, uh, we, we gradually grow our, you know, um, uh, portfolio, you know, um, to, to be much more, I mean, Xiaomi is not a cell, even though I introduced you as a cell phone manufacturer, you are much more than, than that today. Yeah. So now, you know, um, we actually, you know, have, um, you know, I would say, you know, um, uh, so today, you know, we have over 120 million uh, IoT devices connected, not including the phones, okay? You probably don't have an idea how, you, how, how big that number is. 120 million IoT devices, you know, connected, you know. Um, that's actually the largest, you know, IoT platform in the world. Uh, not even Apple, not even Samsung, not even Huawei have that number of connected devices, okay. So um, that's just to tell you how you know, powerful this, you know, um, you know, Xiaomi model was, you know, um, in going into each field, right? When we take the same model, you know, in going into, let's say, you know, the, the purifier, you know, you know, the Beijing air was, um, you know, uh, yeah. polluted, you know, uh, a lot of pollution, right? Well, guess what, you know, uh, before we go into the purifier market, people would have to pay, uh, you know, 7,000, 8,000, okay, for a decent, you know, air purifier. If you have to change the filter, it takes another 1,000 per filter, you know. This was a filter, okay. <laughs> when we go into the market, okay, you know, the cost of building a very, very good purifier costs less than 1,000. Come on, you know. Those are just machines that have very big fans <laughs> and filters. So it goes back to your thought of companies are charging margin because they, they, they can. They overcharge, okay. So, you know, we managed to actually sell the, you know, uh, air purifier for seven ninety nine, one one tenth of their pricing. The, 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 the you know, um, the competitor we, 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 we measure against, right? With the same level of uh, purifying, uh, uh, you know, quality, performance. Yeah. Uh -huh. We literally, you know, give it to a third party and, uh, you know, when they do the test, you know, we are on par, if not, you know, better than these, you know, uh, over, overcharging company. We're talking about one-tenth the difference, right? Now, you know, you, uh, with that, you can understand why, you know, we, we quickly become the number one, you know, air purifier, you know, uh, manufacturer in the world. You know, it took only, you know, less than two years, right? We, when we do, uh, you know, other devices, TV, router, we do the same thing. Um, you know, uh, years later, we finally released our rice cooker. <laughs> we wish we had that, you know, in the first day of our, yeah. you know, then we would be actually, you know, um, doing, a, you know, marketing for our own rice cooker, okay? Um, but we do the same thing, you know, we take this approach. Um, so that's why, you know, people are starting to, 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 to see Xiaomi as, you know, uh, more than just a, you know, cell phone company. They actually see us as, a, you know, IoT companies now. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's really exciting, you know, um, and we're also very fortunate. You know, um, when we, you know, uh, build a company, um, you know, um, we come across the, uh, the, the, the wave of uh, mobile internet, we come across the, the, the wave of um, IoT, we come across the wave of AI, right? Just imagine, you know, now that we have this, you know, many connected devices, this many devices are generating 
you know, tremendous amount of useful data every second. Okay, with AI, with machine learning, you know, many of you actually, you know, uh, you know, are studying, you know, data science now, you know, um, in in uh, in school. That's wonderful, okay? Because you know, when, when you graduate, you're ready to you know solve some real world problem, you know, for you know, uh, uh, you know, outside. Um, just imagine how much you know intelligence we could build into these IoT devices. You know, finally, we can actually turn your home into a smart home. Okay. So, essentially, that actually was my next question. Of you hear a lot of buzzwords about deep learning, five okay. G, IoT. You know, not so much blockchain anymore, but. <laughs> But where do you see the next, the next wave the next, or the next opportunity? I see. Uh, well, um, well, there's a lot of opportunity outside of uh, you know, uh, th this field. But uh, within this field, I think uh, the 5G is going to you know, uh, be a big, big deal. Okay? Um, you might think that you know, uh, your, your phone's connection, uh, the connectivity, the data is already fast enough. No, you know, it's fast enough you know, for the experience that we are giving you today. right? Um, and, and, and programmers actually, you know, deliberately, you know, make sure that they operate decently, you know, given the current network bandwidth, right? If you give them 5G, they, they're going to give you something, you know, that has, you know, even richer experience. You know, finally, you know, the, uh, the AR, the, the VR, you know, all those, you know, um, high performance streaming, you know, um, you know uh, experience is going to be everywhere in the, in the application, okay? So um, I think the 5G is going to be a big deal. Um, well, AI, you know, uh, this time around, you know, you, you know, we talk about this, right? AI, you know, do, uh, you know, in the past 40 years, yeah. it goes up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, you know, it goes up as hype, and then, you know, people are disappointed, and then it goes down, okay? Uh, this time, you know, we this have... This time it's here for good. This time we have strong, you know, reason to believe that, uh, you know, it's going to, you know, uh, uh, to be a, you know, uh, I don't think it's going to, you know, uh, uh, you know achieve, you know, um, what we have seen in, in movie like Skylet or things like that, um, but it is you know powerful enough to you know um, to to turn a lot of the you know um, you know uh, dumb devices into intelligent devices, you know with, with very uh, you know little programming that we have to hard code into them. Okay, no more decision tree we have to do. Okay, we could actually give them enough data so that you know they can uh, you know uh, become smarter. Um, outside of um, this industry, uh, I, I think uh, biotech is going to be a big deal. Yeah, I think um, you know the four pillars you know, that Purdue have picked for uh, for the 150 years. Uh, you know, I think is spot on, right? Space exploration, um, uh, biotech, mm -hmm. and AI, uh, sustain, uh, sustainability of yeah. the Earth. I, I think you know uh, these four fields uh, you know have tremendous you know uh, uh, future. Um, you know, I, I'm personally, you know, um, uh, actively, you know, investing in in fields outside of, uh, um, you know, just the 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 field I was familiar with. Yeah. So it's hard to imagine, but we're almost out of time already, and we've barely seemed to have scratched the surface in our conversation. But just as a last comment, like, what advice would you give the young entrepreneurs out here, given your experience today? Okay. Uh, well, too many. You know, do I have another two hours? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, so um, my first, or well, given the time limit, okay, yeah. I will give, I will tell you the uh, what, what I think is the most important thing first. Okay, do not rush into entrepreneurship, you know, too too fast. Okay, make sure you know um, you accumulate enough uh, experience. Okay, you make sure you have you know uh, accumulate you know the fundamental strength before embarking on a you know entrepreneurship you know um, project because it's really hard you know it's really hard even if you have a brilliant idea if you don't have the right fundamental or experience or the uh, yeah you know uh, common sense you know, you know um, you know common sense usually come after you fail 20 times okay um, if you don't have enough of that you're just going to you know uh, work on a good idea and see it fail okay you would be seeing you know uh, other people uh, Doing the same thing, but you know, just because their execution is actually much more, you know, well planned, more mature, they would, you know, um, get to the finish line, you know, way before you you uh, you, you do. So number one is, um, you know, do not rush into entrepreneurship. You know, it took me 13, 14 years yeah. before I finally have the confidence to, uh, you know, uh, feel it's ready. Okay, 
so that would be number one. Okay. Uh, the second is uh, I shared that with um, you know someone over lunch today. Um, they asked me this question. Uh, I, I I tell him okay. Uh, just remem remember these two things. Okay. Do not underestimate. Oh, that's because you're going to go through you know um, um, difficult time. You know uh, you know for sure. Okay. Uh, even for the luckiest you know startup in the world. You know. Um, they, they go through, you know, uh, many, many tough times. Uh, during the downtime, do not underestimate your caliber and your team's caliber, okay? But at the same time, never overestimate your understanding of what the customers truly really need, okay? Um, I have seen so many entrepreneurs fail because they, they have a pipe dream to think that, you know, hey, you know, this is a problem that, you know, um, uh, needs solving, you know? That's the perfect opportunity for, for my startup to solve this problem. They believe that this problem is needed you know, for everyone. Only when they find out later that that's a very narrow problem. Only very few people actually you know, have that problem. Have that problem okay? I've seen so many you know, entrepreneurs overestimating on their ability to truly understand the true demand of the market, of the customer need. And you know, how, did we, how did we address that in Xiaomi? You know, because we, we were old enough, right, in not overestimating our understanding, especially about the need of the younger generation. You know, now, you know, I, I, don't, I, I cannot imagine myself understanding, you know, uh, the needs of, you know, uh, teenagers anymore. You know, that's not my day-to-day -day life anymore. I don't know what they need, right? Uh, so, in day one, you know, we try everything we could to be closer to the customer, okay? to listen to their feedback, okay? <laughs> Example of that, you know, um, in our, you know, our regular release of the OS, you know, every time they upgrade, we'll actually, you know, pop up a survey and ask them, hey, tell us, you know, the top three things you, you like about this, this, this build. Also tell us about the three things you hate the most about this build, okay? We'll be asking them, you know, to give us feedback. And you guys do it weekly, if I recall. We did uh, weekly updates on the OS. Okay, can you imagine, you know, flashing your phone every year? I mean, every, every week. Every week you know? But that's also where you get the feedback from your customers. Yes, and uh, we will give them, you know, okay, you know, among these, you know, uh, five features, rank them, you know, which one you, you think, you know, um, is the most useful. Rank them, okay? That's very helpful. They actually, you know, help us to spend our very limited uh, resource on the most important problem. That's because again, all startups, like doesn't matter how, actually, not just startups, any company, doesn't matter how many engineers you have, you always have limited resource, mm -hmm. right? So we realized this was the way to, you know, make sure we actually are, you know, uh, spending our, you know, li very limited resource wisely on where it matters, okay? So um, I, would, I would, you know, leave with, uh, you know, uh, stop at that, you yeah. know, um, uh, uh, there's a lot to learn, you know, um, you know in, um, um, Entrepreneurship and non-entrepreneurship. Um, you're, you're, you know, very young, you know, and um, you know, I, I wish, you know, I really wish, you know, um, uh, when I was, you know, your age, sitting in this room, someone actually, you know, um, with the experience of, uh, you know, Arnold and myself, we're here to actually warn you of the things not to do or to do. So, hopefully, this is useful. Thank All right. you. That's we're out of time. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you.